There we go. Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. We are live here answering your questions. I also have some breaking news for you guys as well. And very excited for tonight. I got my little adult beverage, which I can't show on camera, but I will be having a sip of it. Mm. Perfect. Nice ice cold one. And let's get into it. So first off, I, I want to kind of give everybody an idea that, hi Theo, hello Karen. I had over 400 uh, reach outs this week. Um, so I can't get to everybody. Um, but what I did is I usually did is I've kind of categorized it. Um, hi Larry, welcome, welcome. So I kind of category categorized all the questions, and I'm just waiting for my email to actually pop up. I was a little busy earlier. Uh, come on, come on, come on. And we're good. Okay. We are having our Jayco. Jayco has already negotiated uh, the buyout, and what we want to do is is get your opinion on Rockwood, Flagstaff, Cougar, and Alliance for travel trailers. We're looking actually to go from our fifth wheel down to a travel trailer. It was something we already had planned on doing two years ago before we ran into major problems with our slide outs on our north. Not to say that Jayco is completely to blame, but at the same time, I feel like their manufacturing is not as good as these other brands. What is your opinion? Um, first off, I don't hear a lot about Jayco um, being um, a bad produ a product. Generally, Jayco is a decent builder. Even though Thor bought him out... Um, <clears throat> You know, I wouldn't skip over the Jayco Eagle. I know you had a bad experience with a Jayco product, but I wouldn't necessarily skip over it. At the same time, uh, to me, Rockwood and Flagstaff are the standard in the travel trailer industry. Cougar is a good product. Um, Alliance's new Paradigm travel trailer seems to be pretty well put together. And even though we've been talking a lot about frame flex and frame failure on grand design fifth wheels like Solitude and Momentum, I wouldn't overlook the Transcend or the Imagine either. What I would look for first is, number one, I would go to haul those products that you're, you're looking at. And what I would do is kind of bang on the walls a little bit, push on the ceiling, um, stand and move around in the shower, uh, lay on the bed. These things are going to give you a better idea of the comfortability build compared to just walking in saying, oh yeah, that bathroom's cool. Oh yeah, that cabinet's good. Yeah, that probably would work. Sit on the toilet. Get, on the, get in the shower. Stuff that's not done anymore. When I was a regular salesperson at Giant RV in California, the first thing, even if people loved the layout and it was perfect layout, I still made them lay in the bed. I still made them get in the shower. I still made them move around the coach. Because that's the right way to kind of get a feel. Because otherwise you might as well just do your shopping on the internet, right? So that would be my suggestion. And I wouldn't discount Jayco Eagle, okay? Even though you've had a bad experience with one of their fifth wheels, I wouldn't just throw them out. I would still kind of look at and just kind of give it a comparison look. It'll help you narrow it down. If it were me, I would be in the Rockwood Flagstaff category, or maybe a Keystone Cougar or Paradigm, um, I don't think you'd go wrong with any of those three products, especially in a travel trailer. So hopefully that helped you out. Okay. All right. Okay, I also got uh, 115 emails asking me to share the data I've been collecting on Grand Design fifth wheels and fifth wheels in general um, when it comes to uh, frame flex or frame failure or construction problems, okay? First off, I want to make something a little clear. 
the data is very incomplete still. I'm still gathering a lot of information and it's going to take a while. This isn't going to be something that's going to happen in a week. The more people send me data, for example, today I got my first person that reached out to me with a Keystone, Montana, uh, high country that they had frame failure on. Okay. Um, so I, I don't have all the data com uh, compiled yet. When I have the data, I will release it. I'm going to first go to the manufacturers before I release the information. Okay. Because I think it's only fair to give them the opportunity to address the problem once they have the completed data before I release it publicly. Okay. And all I'm going to release data-wise is year, make, model, and model number of the actual fifth wheels that I've compiled the information on. Okay, so it's hard to share with you incomplete data. If you guys have questions about what I've gathered, have reached out to me and said they're having frame problems, construction issues, quality issues, or frame failure, frame flex is Grand Design Solitude and Grand Design Momentum. What is still shocking is even four days later after I released that video on this main channel, I still am yet to get anybody to tell me they're having that kind of problem with a Grand Design Reflection. So I don't know. I haven't gotten all the data together. It's going to take me months. And what I really want to see happen is I want to see more people reach out to me. You know, I, I saw somebody told me Josh the RV nerd uh, has finally hopped on the bandwagon and decided he wants data as well. Um, you know, if you don't feel comfortable sending me the data, send it to him. Okay. But either way, this is going to get done. Right. So you just got to give me time. I've only been really gathering data for about three weeks now. So it's going to take more time because I don't have the resources. All right. Pardon me, my nose is all stuffily today. More than normal. Okay. Uh, we have a 2010 Winnebago Journey that we're looking to trade in and upgrade to a higher end, bigger diesel pusher. It seems like every single dealership we go to, whether it's at a show or at a dealership lot, they keep telling us that we need two to three hundred thousand dollars down to get out of our trade into something similar or exactly like an Allegro bus. That's almost fifty percent down of the actual unit's purchase price overall. I'm not quite understanding why. They're throwing a lot of verbiage that I do not understand. For instance, they told us that our, we don't have enough assets for the bank to actually approve the loan with minimal down payment. But yet, when I look at my credit report and my credit history, what I keep seeing is no inquiries, as if none of the banks or none of the dealerships have sent the loan application to the bank. Can you explain this to me so that way I have a better understanding of how to make this work? Do I need to look for something used? I don't want to. I'd rather have brand new. I've always bought brand new. Can you please give me some advice? Now, I skipped some of the paragraphs because they put some personal information in there. So I was trying to skip over the personal information because I don't like to give it out. Um, first off, Jumbo RV loans are some of the, is wrong to change the pin box to gooseneck on fifth wheel. Yeah, I don't like doing gooseneck, dude. I don't like doing gooseneck on fifth wheel, Mr. Anderson. It weakens us. But now, the smaller, lighter weight fifth wheels, um, you could probably do it, no problem. But when you get into those heavier, bigger, high profile fifth wheels like Cardinal, uh, Riverstone, uh, Jayco North Point, uh, Keystone, Montana, yeah, you don't want to do that. That's, I mean, you can do it because technically you can, but I don't suggest it. I think it's a horrible idea. Um, so anyway, um, back to this. 
when you're going to go after a half a million dollar motorhome, there are four things beyond credit that a bank wants to see. First off is an asset list. Generally, they want to know what your home's worth, how much equity you have in the home, uh, how much you have in 401k, uh, how much you have cash in the bank. I mean, they pretty much want you to have the ability to pay cash through assets, stocks, bonds, etc. They want to know if you absolutely had to, you have the ability to pay cash. Now, that generally is a loan that starts at around $150,000 plus. Now, that Jumber loan, no, Riverstone, absolutely not Riverstone. Riverstone's from Forest River. It's their high-end Forest River product. It's like similar to a, a Mobile Suites by DRV, a Redwood, a Montana Big Sky. Um, it's above a landmark on the Heartland level. Um, three inch thick sidewalls, but, you know, four actual real four seasons coach. There's not that many of them out there. Okay. Uh, it's only been out for about six years. So you might want to look it up. Pretty good stuff. Okay. Um, moving forward. Sorry. Uh, so when you go after these jumbo loans, they also want a certain percentage down. Now, if you're a half a million dollar purchase price, they're going to want probably between $125,000 and $150,000 cash out of pocket in most cases. Hello, Zachary. Um, so now that's not all the time. I've gotten some loans done with 15% down. So probably closer to, let's call it 75 grand down at that point. But generally they want a lot of skin in the game on top of you having the assets to be able to do it. Here's what I would tell you. When I, I would submit everything to the bank because I'm just that way. You never know what the bank's going to say. I've had banks who ask me for no statements on a $400,000 loan just based on the person's credit history, based on the job history, things of that nature. Okay, But for the most part, a dealership, especially a finance team or a manager, is going to gather the information before they make a decision whether even to submit the loan. And the reason why is once they submit the loan, okay, once they have submitted the loan, once they've taken money from you, that takes the coach off the market in most states. In most states, if you give them a deposit and you give them a credit app, they can't sell that unit. So a lot of times they want to gather the information and not take the coach off the market or the big motorhome off the market until they can be absolutely sure that they can get you a loan. Okay. Now, that being said, a lot of finance guys... A lot of sales managers on the desk are, excuse my language, everybody close your ears, they're fucking idiots, okay? Most of them. And the reason why is because instead of just proceeding the deal like a normal person should and just kind of go with what the bank's going to say or just see what the bank's going to say, a lot of times they're just going to get lazy and go, yeah, that's not that easy. So here's my recommendation to you. I know what city and state you live in. I'm going to hook you up with a guy that lives about five hours from you. And he sells Tiffin and Newmar. Rare to have both on one lot. And he is a hyper intelligent guy, probably smarter than me. And I'm going to send you his contact information here through email. And go see him. He'll get you set up with a loan. Okay. But to answer your question, you're going to need those things prepared just in case. Because he's more than likely going to need them. But he'll submit the loan no matter what. I mean, that's the way good kind of guy he is. Okay. Okay. Moving along. Moving along. Moving along. <laughs> okay. I got five emails like this. How did you get the nickname the Honey Badger? And why do you use it on YouTube? Um, that's an interesting story. I wasn't sure if I wanted to answer this, but I'm going to answer it anyway, okay? Um, so one day, uh, I was at Giant RV. A guy named Lonnie Nicholson. Uh, he was the general sales manager who was pouring down rain 
like five days straight in Colton, California. And we were all standing around. And I had a reputation. I still have a reputation of just telling people how it is. Um, I just got visited today by three subscribers came today to the lot from different areas of the West Coast. And they said, man, we really love how like direct and, and to the point you are. And, you know, or how you just kind of just have a lot of uh, people use the word candor. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I was the number one sales guy at giant RV in the towable department for like four years straight. And one day here we are sitting in front of a desk. It's raining. Everybody's doing training or all the sales guys are around and Lonnie plays these old badger car commercials from Johnson cars and auto out in the East coast. If anybody knows who they are is from the East Coast, give a shout out to Johnson because they did great car commercials back then, if they're still around. And it was a little badger. And the little badger would walk around and go, Hey there, buddy. How about we make ourselves a deal? You know, and wiggle room. I'll show you wiggle room. Wiggle, wiggle, wah. Wiggle, wiggle, wah. <laughs> anyway, so everybody started laughing, right? And, and one of my buddies named Sal... Uh, looked over and said, <laughs> just started laughing and pointing at me. He didn't go into any details in his video. I know you mentioned this a couple weeks ago. Oh, did they drop again? No, they didn't drop again. I'll go into that in a minute, Mr. Fowler, uh, H2O Fowler. I'll explain that in a minute. He's way behind. And I'll tell you why later. Okay? He basically took it off my video, which is fine. I, am, I'm, I'm, I feel flattered that I was even on his video. Okay. Um, anyway... So here we go. Uh, he then plays, uh, everybody plays the honey badger guy. The one goes, honey badger don't care. Honey don't badger don't give a bleh, you know. And all of a sudden everybody goes, that's John. And so everybody started calling me the badger. And then everybody started calling me the honey badger. And I hated that name for a long time. And then my wife came out of nowhere and said, hey, you know what? Um, you should use that on your YouTube channel. So I decided to use it. Okay, so the RV channel, RV Miles. So RV, so RV Miles actually, uh, I got told by a bunch of people that he like mentioned me in a video, which I was like, what? I didn't believe it at first, and then he he said it. So basically, he took information from two videos I did and just put them into his video as an update. Um, it wasn't to bite off me or call me, you know, do anything nefarious. I think what happened was, is he like nobody was saying anything and then all of a sudden like i'm the one that mentioned it a few weeks ago and he just decided oh shoot since interest rates are dropped i might as well get that in front of my subscribers because he probably he has a hundred thousand something subscribers so he's basically reintroducing the information back to uh the folks through his channel that i already said so it's just kind of a, uh, you know hey he shared information i'm gonna share it with the world I was called Wormy for years because my bait and tackle shop. There you go, Theo. There you go, Wormy. I love it. Sip of adult beverage. Off camera. One, two, and... God, I love a good Modelo. Oh, tall can. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's talk about that for a second. Because somebody emailed me and asked me the same question. They did not drop again. They already dropped. And they dropped to the bottom of where they're going to be. If banks drop their interest rates any more than what they already have, then they're going to start losing money. So they're at that very bridge where they have to do a lot of loans to make profit. So they're not going to be able to drop the interest rates any more than they already have until the Fed drops their rate. So just so you understand. So it's going to be a few months. Like I said, them lowering the interest rate was something that the banks decided to do on their own so they went and lowered the rates like today uh we had a 750 score qualify for 799 which if you go back for three months ago that rate was in the nines um we had a guy today that was a 720 score qualify for nine and a half um that was 11.99 12 and a half three four months ago so they've changed the way they're structuring uh, the rate loans for RVs, but there's only a certain point where they can't lower the rate anymore. So it wasn't RV Miles saying they're dropping it again. It was RV Miles basically just saying, 
Because I, I, I found out RV Miles watches my videos. Kind of feel flattered about that. Uh, and, you know, he sees I only have 10,000 subscribers. There's 100,000. He goes and gives me credit on the video, but yet he shares the, reshares the information. I thought that was bitching and amazing. Uh, I really appreciated that. Um, you know, and I also appreciate some of these corporate YouTubers sticking their neck out now. I mean, you got to understand something. From my perspective, I was angry. I, I, I have been very angry with, with some of these corporate YouTubers. And I'm talking about corporate YouTubers that work for a large corporation. And there's a lot of them. There's not just one guy, guys. There's multiple out there. And there's another one in particular, and I'm not going to call him out, but he always has a stinking smile on his face and tells everybody that every coach is the most amazing thing he's ever seen. And he's a grand design dealer in most of uh, in his in his space. And I won't tell you where. And, and just to let you know, it, I'm not talking about Josh the RV nerd, okay? Uh, but this particular guy has has comments on his YouTube channel about frame flex, about frame failure, and yet he ignores it. And that pisses me off. But at the same time, I kind of understand. Because when you work for a corporation, whether you're being contracted by them or whether you're a direct employee of them, you have to follow along with their legal team and their, and their stuff. And... You know, there's an old saying, don't step on your toes to, to spite your face, I think is what it is. Thank you, Skylar. I really appreciate you, bud. Thank you very much. Um, but, like, I'm lucky. My guy, he, like, I bet you he gets phone calls. I bet you the guy that I work for gets phone calls from factories going, do you know what the hell that kid's saying now? And he probably goes, yeah, yeah, I'll talk to him. But I never hear about it <laughs> because it's like, hey, you do your thing. You do your thing. <laughs> I mean, that's how it kind of feels sometimes. So I'm very excited that I have such a great owner. Um, I have uh, such a great guy in, in the ownership team that, that I'm a part of. And my GM is very, very uh, astute to what's going on and things of that nature. So uh, very appreciative. Also, I need someone if it's later on or whatever I got look I love the super chats and the super thanks I love those things I really appreciate it I even appreciate more and I want to reach out and thank I don't know who these folks are but I got 10 people that deposited money into my Venmo account thank you I I woke up one morning and one Venmo, then another in an hour, then another like an, two days later. And I'm sitting there scratching my head like, is this a mistake? Did someone accidentally send me money? And then there's like more and more and more. And I, 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 I want to thank you guys because I know what I'm going to do with that money. Any money you guys send me through super thanks, super chats and stuff like that, I've already decided what I'm going to do with it. Um... I'm going to start a program where I'm going to take that money and I'm going to go to RV parks where people full time in and I'm going to give them gift cards for things that they may need in their coach so they can buy parts for their unit, especially if it's older and especially if they're on a fixed income and they're, they're full timing in their 1988 fifth wheel or whatever, or maybe something like that. So that's what I'm planning on doing with that money. So for those of you that sent me money through Venmo, I'm going to put that to good use. It totaled like almost $700. And I, I really, I, I appreciate it. And I'm going to put it to work. Because I don't believe that I should just keep that money. I think I should put that to some kind of use, not only for the channel, but also for the RV community. So I really appreciate that a lot, guys. Uh, um, and I'm going to keep it private. I, anybody who sent me money, uh, I, I'm really going to keep that private. Okay. What should you ask and check for during a walkthrough? Ooh, great question. Lillian Hernandez. That is a great question. Okay. Lillian, are you have first Lillian, I gotta ask you a couple questions. Number one, did you already put a deposit down on a coach and what did you buy? Or what are you looking forward to buying? Let me know that. That'll help me actually answer that question a little more detailed. 
And while you're answering that question in the comments section, I'll take another swig of my uh, adult beverage. Oh yeah, nothing like a cold Modelo. Take your time, Lillian. There we go. 2023 Forest River Sunseeker 3. Ooh, Class C Motorhome. Okay, so Sunseeker... Um, hi, Alex. Um, Sunseeker is actually one of the better built Class C Motorhomes, and I don't get to talk about it very much. Um, three things that do kind of you want to look at with a Class C Motorhome especially since more than likely that 2023 has been seeing on the lot at least 200 days is you want to go it first of all Lillian is it full body paint or is it stickered is it graphics or full body paint hi Sierra graphics okay so since it's going to be white Hola, AJ. Since it's going to be white exterior on the cap, get on, get them to get you a ladder and go up on the front cap. So where the seal and the front cap are, what you want to look for is see if there's any stress cracks there. I ran into that not a lot, but let's say a dozen times since I sold them from 2012 to 2019. So I ran into that about a dozen times. It wasn't very much, but just enough. So you want to look for stress cracks on both sides of the cap. And it's where the where it seals from the RV body to where the bed starts. Okay. Um, the next thing you want to do, or uh, shore power. So are you buying this? At, you're obviously buying this at a dealership. So let them do their regular walkthrough with it plugged in. And then make them do it again with everything unplugged. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of times when they put a motor home into service, they generally plug it in. And a lot of techs, especially if they're super busy, they forget to actually just test everything on 12 volt power. Okay. So make sure like you run the water pump, the furnace, um, lights, um, your uh, radio um, trying to think of every stuff on 12 volt off the top of my head but everything that's 12 volt you want to make sure that you have it running after you do it when it's plugged in so basically do a second walk around which doesn't take long okay to do the second one if they're unwilling to do that that means there's a 12 volt problem walk away most of the time they're going to look at you strange um, and, and it's because they don't get asked that very much so like a lot of times what we do on the walkthroughs here in Pahrump, Nevada, is we do it on the generator first. And then after we do the generator, my guys unplug it and just do a secondary walk around with the customer just to show them how 12 volt might work. You know, blown fuses, stuff like that. So that's the second thing I'd look at. The third thing you really want to pay attention to is you want to actually run the water on each faucet and the shower and you'd want to do it with you standing in the shower. So what you want to do, I know I'm, I'm like telling you, go take a shower. No, take the head off the shower, run the water. Okay. Thank you, Game Time, Brian. Really appreciate the, 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 thanks, dude. Really appreciate it. So take the thing off the water. Was my favorite movie. I'll go over that in a minute, Candace. Uh, take the shower head off. Put it down towards the drain and stand in the shower. Whoever the heaviest person or biggest person in your group, stand on the shower. So those are the three things I would do because those are the three things that will be more visible uh, during your walkthrough that can be fixed or repaired pretty quickly while you're there. Outside of that, you really don't have much else to do. Okay, just a normal walkthrough. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully that helped you out. That was a great question, Lillian. Great, great question. Uh, I am a service tech on campers. You could never pay me to own one. Fabio, I don't blame you. I used to work on them. I still own them. It's just, you know, to each their own. What's my favorite movie? I have several favorite movies, but if it was a favorite action or sci-fi movie, Predator. We have a travel trailer that was, was got front-end damage in a storage lot. It's currently being repaired. 
like autos are devalued after an accident, should we expect our camper to be devalued now? Depends how much dam damage ten uh, tenter. There's no Carfax with travel trailers. Um, I would disclose it to them, but it doesn't it depends on the repair. Like I've had stuff that's come in that's got crunched fiberglass in, and it depends on how much damage was there is how I'll take a trade-in value on it. Um, I took in a Montana that had the entire one side crunched like it hit a tree branch. And, but when we looked at the structural integrity of the aluminum and the bonded wall, uh, it, it, it didn't structurally damage it. It was just the fiberglass needed to be replaced and repaired. So I didn't devalue it just the cost of the fiberglass and the labor. So not really. You're welcome, Lillian. Uh, please say my name. It's Mason. Hi, Mason. Uh, which would you go with to a Riverstone 45 bath? I'm a Ford guy, so F450 or F350. Uh, it depends how much you want to spend. If you go to the F350 Platinum with the Max Trailline, the 45 bath is uh, 24,000 pounds GVWR. Um, and if they put the bigger suspension and axles on, it's 25,000 or 26,000 pounds GVWR. So 350 is just fine as long as you get the Platinum package. And you got to have the Max, tra the, the bigger... Um, you got to get the bigger cooling system and the bigger braking system, and you still want to do airbags. Have you gone to Adrian Dax? No. Say you, W, okay. Okay, let's get to the next question. Why is there not a rebate program with new RVs for the customer? Why do I hear from guys like Josh the RV Nerd and Matt's RV and Tobal Reviews that there are rebates on motorhomes right now and travel trailers and fifth wheels, yet nobody at the dealership seems to know what they're talking about and say there's no customer rebates. Can you please explain the difference because I'm a little confused between what Josh and Matt are saying compared to what you say. Okay, so this actually has to do with factory. So the factory does not give customers a rebate. So it works very different. Uh, thank you, Justin. No, I haven't had a chance to research the trailer Toad 5000 yet. Though. I'll get to it. Um, rebates in the car business are intended to drive customer business towards a particular model and trim of a car company, okay? Rebates go directly to the dealership to write down their product. So it's different. It's not a rebate. It's more like cash back. It's gonna be more like a cash back program to the dealership for purchasing. So it's like your Discover card. You know, you go and use your Discover card or your, any of your credit cards, it gives you points of cash back, okay? You spend the money on it, and the merchant takes the money, but who gets the cash back? The initial purchaser. So how Forest River and Keystone and Jayco and all these people work is they give the money to the initial purchaser, in this case, the owner of the credit card, which is the dealership. So that's why you rather you see discount programs. The other thing you have to understand is prime banks, prime lending banks like U.S. Bank, Bank of America, do not accept rebates on a contract on a recreational loan. So that's why they want cash down payments only, trade-ins, and they also want a discount program. Okay, so hopefully that helped you out. Hit that like button and show some love. Thank you, JR Star. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is the last one I'm going to do off email, and then we're going to do some comments, okay? You say in a video that a Ram 1500 cannot tow a fifth wheel. You say that there is no such thing as a half-ton towable fifth wheel. If you call the manufacturer of the fifth wheel and you call the truck company, every one of them say that they are built sturdy enough to be able to tow a fifth wheel. 
So explain your logic because according to my research, you're full of absolute, well, he uses the S word, but we'll say crap. Okay, so my research is experience, okay? When it comes to a half ton, uh, to, you like you look like my friend blank. Thank you so much. Are you a Riverstone dealer? Yeah, I'm a Riverstone dealer. I'm not a Mobile Suites dealer, unfortunately, but I am a Riverstone dealer. I wish I had Mobile Suites and Redwood. Great products. Um, Alliance Paradigm is a good product, even though it's a step below. But, um, you know, I wish I had those too. My God. Anyway, um, getting back to this. So half-ton trucks, Ram 1500, Ford F-150, Chevy GMC 1500, Toyota Tundra, Nissan Titan. All half-ton towable vehicles. Some have diesels. Um, some have gas engines, etc. Okay. My experience tells me that you make you can tow, let's say, probably 20,000 pounds with a half-ton truck. I've seen commercials with a Ram 1500 with the 5.7 liter Hemi and the big towing package tow a semi truck hooked up with you know 10,000 12,000 pounds worth of cargo inside the thing okay so um wow jeez louise tons of trolls tonight Does that mean it's going to stop it at a high speed? If you're going 55, 60 miles out of the road, down the road with that kind of weight on you going downhill, is that half ton truck going to stop it? Probably not. Okay. The other thing that is not talked about <clears throat> is payload capacity. A half ton truck has usually a general payload capacity between 1,300 and 1,800 pounds. Sometimes 1,900 depends on the package, okay? Payload capacity, hello, Roblo, includes the passengers, your fuel, and stuff inside the truck. So that being said, if you add up everybody in the truck, your payload capacity goes down. While your three quarter ton gas trucks, okay, three quarter ton gas trucks usually have a payload capacity between 2,400 and 2,900 pounds. Okay, so payload capacity is how I know that a half ton truck should never tow a fifth wheel. Are there people who do it? Absolutely. Do I lose deals because I refuse to do it? Absolutely. I refuse to sell a, a fifth wheel to a half ton truck owner in it for 14 years. I did it one time 15 years ago and I'll never do it again. Ever. I'll deliver it to an RV park. I'll deliver it to your house. But if you're the person that's going to tow with a half ton truck, not going to do it. Not going to put the fifth wheel hitch in. Not going to set up the brake control. I'm going to do nothing for that truck. Because I know it can't tow it. I know it can't stop it. Okay. So I may be an idiot. But I'd rather be safe. I'd rather be the safe idiot. Than the dumb smart person. Yo big head. How's it going? Hey Artog. Epoxy garage doors. Montgomery Texas. Cool. Are you having a good day? Great day, Mark Copeland. How you doing, boss? Haven't seen you in a while. I need F450, so my wife is listing. So tell F450 is the way to go. <laughs> Hold on. We're going to have a swig for on that one. Wow. Woo. Mm. Okay. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was good. Okay, Mr. Mr. Anderson. Go ahead and get it. You need a four F450. Okay. 
What do you call a driver that races cars? Okay, race driver. Okay, puts every well in danger. Absolutely. Because a half, half ton says it can tow a certain weight doesn't mean that you should. Somewhat, Fabio. So, Fabio, what I, what I, when it comes to a travel trailer, travel trailer and tow capacity are completely different than payload capacity. So, if you want to go by tow capacity, if you got 10,000 pound tow capacity and the fifth wheel weighs 6,000, 6,500 pounds, you shouldn't tow it. But if it's a travel trailer, 6,500 pounds is fine because tow capacity and payload capacity are two different things. My last truck was a Tacoma payload of 950, but I see everyone overloading them on social media. Yeah, that's very true, Chaz. Beer tried semen on your food. Okay, you're being put in timeout for 24 hours. Hi, Pookie. Laugh out loud. Hello from Belfast, Northern Ireland. JC, hello. How's it going there in the islands? Beautiful. Opinion on Dodge Challenger. Great car, terrible tow vehicle. Okay. Let's get into the comments now. Good Lord. This stream has really grown, guys. I'm going to have to try to figure out a new way of doing this. All the questions. It's fabulous. I love it. It's great stuff. All right. Let's get into comments. Comments. Holy crap. I haven't released a video in five days. That's crazy. Okay, um, here's a great question off the comments was, do you think that Thor Industries ruined the RV business or do you think it's just my imagination? Um, I didn't reply to this yet because um, I didn't know how to answer it. So if I were going to answer this question on off the cuff, I would say I don't think Thor ruined it. Um, I really think Grand Design ruined it. And not because of the quality problems they're going through right now. I'm not talking about their problems that they're having with their fifth wheels today. I'm talking about when they, when they first became really popular in 2015 into early 2016 I noticed a trend in the industry where the corners that were being cut that weren't normally cut started happening to keep up with Grand Design so instead of Grand Design came out with all this beautiful cabinetry and all this great looking floor plans and they had a great story and a great presentation and a great pitch but you can if if I sat a 2015 solitude next to a 2013 Bighorn, you would throw up because the Bighorn may not have been pretty. It was actually a very ugly looking unit, but it was built for full timers back then. When Grand Design started going on the upward trend. Everybody in the fifth wheel market started following some of the cutting of corners they did. And they're just small little things, guys. Small little things. Not the problems they have now. I'm talking about like these small little things. They just go, really? You're not going to cover that pipe? Really? You're going to leave that electrical exposed? Really? You're not going to seal the underbelly all the way? And it started like bleeding into other manufacturers. Because now they got to put in the beautiful cabinetry. Now they got to put the beautiful furniture in. Now they got to keep up with Grand Design. Instead of and, and and this is the industry's fault. This isn't just Grand Design's fault. This is an industry problem. Because instead of going, okay, how do we counter that and come up with something that's so good that Grand Design will be put out of business? They instead go monkey see, fucking monkey do. And excuse my language, but that's kind of how it it kind of evolved. So I don't think Thor ruined it. I, I think Grand Design unintentionally did it. Unintentionally did it. 
I don't think they did it on purpose. Okay. Okay, Matthew's getting blocked. What's up, Nugget? I've seen rear differentials burn up from towing with a fifth wheel, and we tell customers the same thing regarding fifth wheel half ton trucks. Very good, Fabio. Love it. Oh, word. How about the charger? I already told you about the charger. Matthew Wild. Need a moderator. Yeah, I'm getting rid of them. Don't worry. What is the most bank for your buck vehicles? Um, if you're talking about trucks, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for, man. Is the dog. I mean, you, you know, most bang for your buck, it depends on how much you want to spend. When it comes to RVs, it really, it, it's about money. Once you know about what you want to spend, it's easier to ask you. It's easier to answer that question. Okay, Zay is going bye-bye. We're going to go, uh, we're going to go, uh, put user in timeout. 24 hours. Okay. Uh, hello, what are you talking about? Talk about RVs. I gr I like grilled cheese. Good for you, Agent 47. Bro, you need a moderator. You have to... So many trolls and inappropriate questions popping up and they are ruining the stream. Yeah, Jay, I know. It happens all the time. I have to slowly block them. I don't have anybody really that can moderate for me. I'll eventually find somebody. And Jesse Provost is getting removed. And goodbye. And goodbye. And removed. There we go. Uh, what is the best rock flap to protect the RV? Diamond shielding is. Bilding. Diamond shielding was. Uh, where are you from? I'm out in Nevada. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Oh, they're all ridiculous, Blur. Don't worry about it. It's I get trolls a lot. In the troll, It's hard to moderate. I try to set the settings properly where it blocks stuff like that, and it occasionally gets through. I mean... See, now I'm getting a bunch of hit messages that are held for review. So that means that it's finally, like, catching up to what I'm trying to do. Okay. Um, do you think that anything built after 2015 is absolute junk? Everybody on Facebook complains about units between 2015 and 2024 that everyone more junk. What is your opinion? Uh, first of all, they really haven't changed a lot in travel trailers and motorhomes in the last... Oh, God. Um, 15 years. So I've been in it 15 years. I've sold 1970s units that were used. I've sold new 2024s and everything in between. And I could say this. Uh, quality control has been about the same for decades. So, you know, it's like they all saying that old cars run better than new cars. I've owned old cars. Old cars run about the same as new cars. Just more technology. Um, Eddie Stuff is hide user on this channel. Eddie Stuff. Uh, remove. There we go. Okay. And remove. And remove. And uh, goodbye and goodbye. Okay, do you want me to be mod? I promise I won't troll. Um, you know what? Next time I'll I actually to be fair, I'm probably gonna um, pick a moderator um, later because I mean we're almost to the end anyway. We've got only ten minutes left. So hi deck two two four four. Uh, where's the one guy he hate my guts um i won't I, so just to let you know i will not be feeling bad for any of the dealers because they have close to fifty thousand dollar markups on everything um that's not true um most dealerships uh, profit margins, if we're lucky and we're in a good market, is eight to nine percent. That's the average. Some are less, some are more, but that's the average, eight to nine percent. So imagine, you sell a hundred thousand dollar motorhome and you're looking forward to making about eight grand. Okay, eight grand gets eaten up in two salaries and insurance for two salaries. Everybody forgets here. Everybody forgets. Okay? We're talking about RVs. 
um, everybody forgets that RV dealerships have to spend money to stay in business. They have to make money to stay in business. Anybody who has a $50,000 markup in a motorhome or a fifth wheel is probably not going to sell that fifth wheel or that motorhome. What is happening is people are getting very mad about what the used values are because the used market corrected itself and everybody overpaid during COVID because of what was happening during 2020 into early 2021. But it's interesting. A lot of people that own 22s are in a lot better position than the people who bought 21s. The people that bought 2020s are actually in better shape than people that bought 2021s. So really, if you own a 2021, yeah, you lost a lot. Okay, but don't get mad at the dealer. Don't get, you know, get mad at the manufacturer. They're the ones that raised all these prices. Do you think Brinkley RVs are good? I don't know yet. Good question, Ash. I don't know yet because I haven't been able to touch them yet. I contacted some dealerships to see if I, they could, I could film a Brinkley on their lot. They wouldn't let me. They, they, and they basically said Brinkley in their dealer agreement basically control all the content that's released um, that they have to get verified uh, through the uh, office that the contents released for Brinkley is very controlled. So they don't want to get caught. You know, if I go to Mike Thompson's RV in California and film a Brinkley and somebody at Brinkley catches that I filmed it at Mike Thompson, Mike Thompson's going to get in deep crap. So I need to find a show or I need to find... Um, I was thinking about flying up to Portland, Oregon for the Portland show. Uh, Curtis Trailers, own, you know, is a Brinkley dealer, and I was like, mm, that might be a good idea to head up there and do that, but I don't know if they'd let me. So um, as soon as I get to touch one and actually go through it, then, yeah, I'll let you guys know. I'll do a review on it. An RV edit? I guess. I mean, I could say they got a good reputation, but I don't know. I don't know yet. I haven't picked it apart yet. I haven't gone through and actually seen the unit and seen what they actually did. Uh, why do some people tell me RVs are a money pit? Because they are a blur. But they're not a money pit like a boat. But, you know, you need a toolkit and a sense of humor. Uh, would you like me to make an RV edit? I don't know really what you mean by that. Riverstone's a great product. Riverstone is up there with mobile suites and redwood um right up there um great product three inch thick sidewalls good subfloor lots of insulation um are they better than a brinkley i don't know because again i haven't gone through a brinkley yet hello hakuna uh is a brinkley owner allowed to let you film theirs maybe someone on your channel will offer i've had three people offer um one person lives on the west coast but i when i when i reached out to them they were a little worried that not about brinkley but worried that if i filmed it in the wrong place at the wrong time you know they might get exposed and they don't want their personal information out there perfect ashley he'll know those kitchen the, the riverstone's really a bitch in fifth wheel it's really well made uh, it depends animation rvs can be expensive it depends there, there's there's a budget for everything there's rvs at a lot all kinds of budgets there's used there's new and there's all kinds of budgets so don't don't think they're too expensive my opinion on the remaining 2024 rv market well i could tell you i think it's going to be extremely busy i think starting uh in two weeks dealerships are going to raise their prices because now we're at the point, we're at the point of no return where since the manufacturers don't want to participate. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking about real participation, not 250 bucks, not 750 bucks, but half of the loss. Because they're not participating, dealerships have already had to start raising their prices back to profitability, even on 2023s. So we're at the boiling point where if you haven't made a decision, they're already going to raise their prices. Again, if you're not ready, I've always said this, if you're not ready, spend the more money when you're ready. But those deals are going to go away, and they're going to go away quickly. Um, I think it's going to be very busy until probably July, and I think once it reaches past July 4th, it's going to freaking be a ghost town because I think that everybody's going to be focused on the elections at that point. That's what I think. 
I just mean like a bunch of clips of one like with cool transitions. Like, cool. Yeah, Tracker, you can send me that stuff for free if you want. I'll put I'll credit on it. Um, can you do ASMR for me? Okay. And put user on timeout, 24 hours. I wish I had the payload for rivers to, lo I love them. Yeah, they're great. Forest River, Cedar Creek. I love Forest River, Cedar Creek too. Cedar Creek's a good coach. Would beneficial to insulate in back of cabinets, storage areas, anywhere possible, best kind of use? It depends on where you're at, Theo. I didn't insulate my underbelly on my Cougar and, or my uh, pastor storage on my Cougar and nothing froze, nothing broke. Um, we didn't have a problem in Klamath Falls, Oregon, Chilliquin, Oregon area gets below zero. So we didn't have that problem. Uh, we don't have that problem with cabinets either. Um, I would say I insulate the windows though. Insulating the windows is really important, especially if you're going to be stationary. I looked at a few Brinkley's in the Maryland quality in the future because of the many floor plans and if they can keep up with the demand. Um... Game time, Brian. I, I mean, only time will tell. That's why I said I gotta go look at it. I, I haven't gotten to look at it yet. Was there any COVID deals? Yeah, there's there was. They're starting to go away. What are my in? I'm in a used Sundance travel trailer. That's why I stand on the lot. Uh, I've been wanting to get your opinion on toy haulers since Heartland Cruiser RV and Forest River. I'm looking at the Stealth 3016G. But FR makes that model under Shockwave and Standstorm, etc. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong. I would stay away from Heartland right now. I'd stay away from uh, the the Torque and the Cyclone and the Road Warrior for right now. Uh, Cruiser RV does the Striker. The only thing I don't like about the Striker is they're heavy as hell. Um, but they're a good product. My buddy Ryan Scott uh, sold them to dealers for a lot of years. So they're a good product. Um, if you live on the West Coast... You know, it's better and easier to buy either a Stealth, Shockwave, or Sandstorm. They're all three the same product, just with different stickers and different colors inside, but they're the same identical product. Uh, the other thing I really want to reach out to you and say is don't skip out on Genesis Supreme RV either. Genesis Supreme, to me, is the absolute best coach on the market. Uh, Jesse Harrington, goodbye. Adios. Uh, Red Hacker. Hi. He doesn't really seem like a liberal, Jesse. I blocked him. And put user in timeout. Yeah, so I check out Genesis Supreme RV. I carry the Ragin version, but there's Genesis Supreme. Uh, there's Power Light. There's a bunch of them out there. They're great. Great. Um, and goodbye. Hi, CJ. Dom, been a while. Haven't seen you in a while. We're getting quicker on timing everybody out. That's good. Okay. Next up. Do you think that all the info that you're gathering should go to NHTSA and Transport Canada? I think that the RV business needs to be put under government supervision uh, since the quality is so bad. Well, first off, um, that's never going to happen. Um, there isn't enough RVs built in a year to justify uh, the government getting involved, uh, number one. Number two, the state of Indiana. There's a reason why the majority of them are built there. They feel like it's the confines and protected uh legally and in a lot of cases they're right in a lot of cases they're wrong um the other problem is is the percentage like the auto industry percentage of lemon law is greater than the rv business okay so the lemon law percentage on rvs of every kind is less than the auto industry and while the here's the biggest problem and this is something nobody really talks about or thinks about 1.6 million rvs were built between midway 2020 to the end of 2022 so in two and a half years 1.6 million rvs were built okay that is 
46% more than any other three-year three year gap. So the amount of problems are guaranteed to increase, but the percentage didn't. Okay. So until we get to a point where the Lemon Law gets up to 25, 30%, the government's never going to step in. Okay. Just like they're never going to step in on the boat business. There's not enough of them built and sold. They don't get in on the yacht business. They're not going to ever be built or, or supervised like the housing industry is. It's never going to happen. Okay. I know a lot of you want that to happen. I know a lot of you guys are going to tell me I'm full of crap and that I'm full of shit and everything else. But this has been a discussion of something in one way or form for the last 50 years. So it's nothing new. Okay. All right. Going back up. Uh, do you think you are generally good faith and try to understand the other side of the political aisle? Uh, I don't talk about politics, Russ. I don't. Um, I think politics is a waste of time because every politician is crooked. doesn't matter what their name is. What times do you stream and when? I stream every Saturday night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Happy belated... Hey, Vivian, how are you doing? Happy val belated Valentine's to you as well. I'm looking at getting a used diesel pusher Freightliner chassis. It doesn't seem like anybody wants to work on the Ford F-350 chassis. Not really, but nobody wants to work on Freightliner either, but you can find them. It's a lot more people that work on Freightliner and Caterpillar than they will on the Ford. No, not the government. I'm in Indiana. Hi, Ash. Cool. Goku, how can I fly? Goku's getting uh, goodbye. Okay, would you recommend buying a salvage title? No, not at all. Not unless you're going to get it for dirt, dirt cheap. And there's so many RV factories. Yep. What is the steam about? Stream about. The stream's about RVs. I live on a plane. Oh, that's sick. I like that. Buying a new trailer home is like buying a camper RV. It's made from the same junk. Okay, Carson. <laughs> Are we, are we against RVs here? No, we're not against RVs. What makes the Genesis so good? Theo, Genesis Supreme, Pablo, the owner, uh, worked on the assembly line. That's what makes it different. So when he looks at building something, he knows the ins and outs of what makes things bad and good, and he makes changes faster than anybody. So when, when instead of waiting on collecting data on warranty claims for a three- or four-year period before a manufacturer makes changes... Pablo makes changes pretty much within six months. So if something's bad and he sees it's a repeated bad thing, he changes it. So that's what makes them good. And they build all the toy haulers around the biggest toy. So if a new toy, a new Can-Am came out tomorrow, they'd go buy the new Can-Am and go build three floor plants around that Can-Am. And that's the way they work. So they're, they're way ahead of the rest of the RV world. Uh, they do have the kitchen slide. The 36, they do have a kitchen slide version. But you just got to look for it. It's out there. Chiefs or Niners? Too late for that. What's my OnlyFans? I don't have an OnlyFans. Okay, so next time, next week, we're going to do a moderator. Um, Larry, you're going to be my moderator next week, okay? So if you're going to come on, if you're coming on next week, you and Karen F are going to be my moderators. And I'm going to switch up and make help everybody do this, okay? To move out of my plane and browse these RVs, do you have any good recommendations? Now that you've owned an airplane, you're going to want to go into a diesel pusher or fifth wheel. Probably like a Mobile Suites or a Riverstone or Redwood. Water RVs? You know what? I haven't done enough research on those yet. Good Lord. Is there a difference between Forest River Stealth, Sandstorm, and Shockwave build quality, meaning which one's the best? They're all the same. Cirque 2424, they're identical. There's nothing different. They're built the same, everything. Um, Send me an email, Cirque uh, 2424. I don't like to get my phone number out on here. Uh, email me at Levingston, L-E-V-I-N-G-S-T-O-N, RVServices at gmail.com. It should be in the description box. Riverstones usually run between 140 and 200 grand, depending on what you want. Um, is quality improving now that it's slowed down? No, it's the same as it's been for 30 years. <laughs> it really is. It's 30 years, 30, 35 years has been the same quality. 
what can a river stone withstand? Um, a lot of cold weather, a lot of hot weather, a lot of wind. Um, probably one of the better four season coaches out there. So, yeah, very much so. All right, guys, I got time. I got about four more minutes left. Fire away anything else you got. Hey, Larry, are you going to be here next week? Best RV insulation. <laughs> Pink Panther. Let's see, they use foam block insulation and bonded fifth wheels, so that's hard to answer. Because when you do a vacuum bonded sidewall, you can't use... Um... Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Appreciate you. Um, they use styrofoam. They use block foam insulation when they do bonded walls. So technically, neither one of them are better. They're both identical. I mean, you got to think that you got a two inch thick sidewall. Okay. And how much insulation can you really get in there? No, I know you own a 2022, Larry. But, Larry, are you going to be here? Um, are you going to be on the stream next week? Mr. Larry Couch. Because that way next week we'll just make you guys moderators. I'm going to make like two or three of you moderators. Is Asdale as great as some say? Um, oh, you're talking about for the windows, Theo. Yeah, I use bubble wrap. If you go to my channel and you go living in a fifth wheel under the playlist, you'll see one of the videos, the, um, the wrap I use for the windows. Uh, I put in the description box of that video. I got it from Home Depot. Asdale saved manufacturers on delamination. So really, Asdale fiberglass's advantage over Luon is there's no wood backer. So like with Luon, when they were putting um, Luon on a bonded wall in, let's say, a Cougar or Montana back in the day, um, there was a wood backer. And that wood would absorb. Uh, okay, sir, I got you. Um, they would absorb. How do I put it? The, the water would get absorbed in the wood backer. And it would cause that bubbling sensation in the fiberglass. Um, Asdale really saved on that. So is it the best fiberglass? It's the best fiberglass to prevent delamination. So your coach will actually look better over time. Um, go to Camping World, okay. All right, Karen. So next week I'll have you mod, okay? If you don't mind, I appreciate it. Anybody else that wants to volunteer to be a moderator next week, just let me know. Because when I get on the stream next week at seven, I'm gonna just instantly make you guys moderators, okay? If you guys are okay with that. Just because it's getting, you know, there it's a good thing, guys. This stream is growing. I mean, I just watched the aftermath after the stream. There was over five thousand people that watched uh, the last two streams combined afterwards. So, I mean, obviously the channel's growing, and I really appreciate it. And that's why I'm trying to always get you guys more and more stuff. You're welcome, Edwin. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I oh, don't be sorry. It's all good. Hi. Okay, I got time for two more questions, guys. Do we have any more questions, or are we going to wrap it up to next week? Adult beverage drink. Mm. Uh, nothing beats a Modelo Especial, especially a cold one. I will be 40 this year. Okay, shout out to Aubrey. Don't like drum brakes? Okay, Al Chino. You can always do whatever you want on the brake system as long as it's electric. Have a good week, Theo. We're going to be getting out of here, Evan. Yeah, Modelo. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Diane. Very, very true. Okay, guys. So, next week, Saturday, 7 p.m. Pacific time, we'll be back on here. Just to let everybody know, I've got three videos coming out next week. 
Um, good for you, Mr. Lonely. Congratulations. Um, three videos uh, next week, and uh, it's going to be fun. So uh, until next time, guys, have a good week. Be safe and enjoy. <laughs>